2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 3 Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man warreth and tangleth himself with the affairs of his life that he may please him whom has chosen him to be a soldier. We're soldiers. We're given armor. We're given a sword. And there are many Christians who they don't take that stance. And they want a life of luxury Christian in that's not the true biblical Christian. The fact is, if you're going to take a stand for God, you're going to take a stand for Jesus Christ. You're going to take a stand for the King James Bible. You're going to go into the world and preach the gospel. You are going to fight against the devil, against the world, against family, and against other Christians. The fact is that the devil does not want you to go out there and witness. And when Jesus gave the parable of the sower and the seed, the very first thing that shows up, the birds, is the devil. That no matter where your field of witnessing, the devil is going to be there. And he's going to hint, he's going, he's not going to try. He will hinder the work of planting seeds. You're going to have the world is going to try to stop you. They'll try to contact your boss. They'll contact the police. They'll contact the authority. They'll do whatever the world can do to try to stop you. Your own family will leave you, will forsake you, will abandon you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Churches and Christians will forsake you. Because many of the churches just think because of the church, they're right. No, they're not. And there are churches that take the side of Satan. There are churches that take the side of the world. And there are churches that take the side of family. And they don't take the side of Jesus Christ. Now, I am a warrior, I am a soldier, and I have been since the day I have been saved. On April 25th, 1987, in Waterford, Connecticut, I knelt down at my grandmother's coffee table, and I asked the Lord Jesus Christ to save my soul, and he saved my soul. April 26th, 1987, on a Sunday, I stood up in a church in Pawkatuck, Connecticut and said, I have received the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. And that afternoon, I went to my dad and began preaching hell. Probably about 24 hours after I got saved, I went up to my dad some way, somehow, and said, I don't want you to go to hell or you're going to hell. And I come from a, a Roman Catholic family, and I, I wrote them letters, I, I, I witnessed to them, I sent them gospel tracts, I dealt with them, and they all got mad at me. And other families came up to me, you know, you know, your aunt got mad that you sent those letters, or your, your uncle did not like your stance of talking to him about, tough, that's not kind, tough. Well, the Catholic Church didn't appreciate you standing outside their church and holding signs and giving God. Tough. I don't care. Bible says go into all the world and preach the gospel. In season, out of season. Well, you know, that church says you're a Ruckmanite. Oh, tough. What is, what is a Ruckmanite? No such thing as a Ruckmanite. Not in the dictionary. Yeah. We have uh, Christian bumper stickers all over our car. Scripture. 
And there have been Christians, well, we can't park next to that car. Tough! Well, you know, style is against Christmas and, and Easter. That's not tough! I've been rebuked by a pastor for my stance on teaching against Christmas and Easter. Uh, tough! I'm a soldier with a sword. I kick gods and idols. And my attitude is tough because what I am saying is correct by the Bible standards. For six years, I, I, I preached at the farmer's market. They called it. We, we don't like it. Tough. Well, you can't do what you're doing. All right, let me, I'm going to go. Let me contact my lawyer. And if my lawyer says I can do it, I'll be back. And if my lawyer says I'm wrong, I apologize right now. I won't do it. I go to my lawyer. My lawyer said, hey, you're right. Here's your letter. I go back. You're right. Well, we don't like it. Tough. I had one guy one time. Oh, why don't you just have hamburgers and all? No. Well, you, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We don't. Tough. You know, uh, so, well, you, you know, you got to change your Facebook and all that. Because the things you write. Tough. You're dealing with Stiley Hayward, who is a doctor of theology, and I'm not as those dippy, wimpy kind of, you know, scholarly, ooh, holy to know, and, and Hebrew and Greek. I'm tough. You don't like it. Show me where I am wrong with the scriptures, and if you can't show me with the scriptures, you get right. I am right. God is right. You tough. And they don't like that attitude. I kick holidays. I kick teachings. I kick worldliness. I'm a soldier fighting. And at the end of my course, I want to hear Jesus say, Well done. I don't care what Jesus says to you. I don't care what, what, what you say to me. I want to hear well done. I have two missions in my Christian walk. To tell the lost people uh, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And for the saved to grow into maturity. Maternity. Yeah. Age. Christians to age themselves. I want Christians to grow up. I don't want them to be spiritual retards, such as the churches are keeping them spiritual retards. Well, we got to have fun. Find me the word fun in the Bible. Find me where Jesus had fun. Show me where the apostles had fun. And I'll show you where you're wrong. You know, even when the gladiator, even when the knights had their, their, their fun. You know, when they had their, their uh, conquests, and their, and they weren't battling, but you know, they had their, their stance where they were challenging each other, the same side. It was for strength. It was for growth. It was to find their weakness. You know, they would have our, they would have the bow and arrow, and they'd shoot the bow and arrow to find, you know what? You need to practice that a little more. Hey, that was a good job. And when they go at it with the lances, you know, the two horses, and it would find a weakness in the soldiers, in the camp. It wasn't for fun. Soldiers drill all the time. When you're aboard a nuclear submarine, you don't have fun. You're always drilling. And a lot of times you lose sleep. 
because you're drilling. You're going to have multiple, multiple, multiple drills about fires aboard a submarine because of the day that when you really have a submarine fire, you better know how to handle it. Churches today are more for fun than they are for drills. This vacation Bible nonsense. Let the kiddies have fun. That's nonsense. I'm a soldier of Jesus Christ. Now as a soldier of Jesus Christ, sometimes Sometimes we get wounded. Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5, verse 31. And Jesus answered and said to them, They that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. And there are times as soldiers we get wounded we get injured whether we are on the battlefield whether our own bodies had broken down or a christian has stabbed us <laughs> you know i have been wounded in battle in the satan in the world i have been wounded infirmities and troubles of my body and I have been wounded by Christians. And there are times there are people who teach, well, you know, we're a faith healer. We can heal. And I say to those idiots, come with me to the hospital and let's have fun. I want to see you go through every room of the hospital and I want to see your healing. Well, well uh, 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 then shut up. You got a false gift you're bragging about and it's a false gift. You don't have no power. You don't have no healing. Shut up. And there are Christians who have been attacked by the devil and they're taken down. And sometimes our attacks come from God. Sometimes we do our own. I am battling today emphysema COPD. It's not the devil and it's not God. It's in this flesh as a young man I smoked cigarettes. I did not wear my industrial mask like I should have at work. And my lungs have now been infected. It's my fault. And I need to go see a lung doctor. I have having issues and had toes amputated off my feet. I need to see a foot doctor. And I'm not ever going to say, well, don't go see a doctor. Jesus said, if you're sick, you need a doctor. And soldiers need a doctor. There, there are called aid stations. There are soldiers in battle or taken off the battlefield. And they are put into a, a transport vehicle or even helicopters or even aircraft. And they are moved to where the hospital ship is, where the aid station is where the uh, hospital facility is. And I have learned through this bout that there are times when you are in the aid station, you are on the hospital ship, or you are in the hospital that the doctors tell you, you're not ready to go back into combat. You just take off your armor, put your armor in the closet, and you've got to rest. Now, whether Satan attack, whether God attack, whether the world attack, whether Christians attack, or whether your own stupidity, 
There may be times that, you know what, you need to rest. You need to listen to the doctor. That doctor may be used, hey, he may be unsaved, he may be saved, and God may be using him. And God may not want you on the battlefield at that time. God may want you to rest. God may want you to heal up. So he, listen, God cannot use a dead soldier. And you can die before God wants you dead. I believe every man has a debt. A date set by God for death. And I believe you can extend that time. There was a king in the Bible that, that God gave 15 more years. And I believe you can shorten your death. Alcohol and tobacco and extreme sex with diseases and infections can cause you to die quicker than God wants you to be dead. Stupidity can cause you to die early. You can avoid the, the, the railroad crossing single and cut around those things and get hit by the choo-choo train and die. When you were warned, don't cross the tracks. Alcohol and tobacco can kill you before your time. And there are times for a soldier, a Christian soldier with a King James Bible, you've got to rest. And I've got to learn, me has to learn, we can't be on the battlefields 24-7. I know there's not enough Christians out there doing what they're supposed to be doing. And it cannot be in our hands. You know, we need sleep. If a body does not get enough sleep, you could kill yourself. There are soldiers who have come off the battlefield and have gone into the aid station, have gone into the hospital facility, and they have been treated by doctors and nurses. Sometimes they go home. And sometimes so, God will have to, God puts you something else, somewhere else. And then there are soldiers when they are released from the hospital, they are allowed to go back into combat. Sometimes they'll have to have physical therapy. Sometimes they have to be retrained or trained in other avenues. God may not have you to that specific field that you were in. He may have orders, okay, rest. Get your rest. Get healed up. I'm sending you to training. I've got another assignment for you. And we got to take that time of resting our bodies from ailments. Wherever those ailments come. And we got to use that time to, to listen to the doctors. We got to spend that time in prayer and reading our Bible because God, our, our Creator, God, our Savior, God, our great physician, may have put us in the hospital bed and say, Listen, this is the only place I can get to talking to you, is in a hospital bed. And you and I need to talk. Now, I've been in the prison ministry many years. And I had taught those men that it took four walls. 
And one of them walls has a door that you don't have the key. You can't freely open and close that door and God had to use that cell to get your attention. And many of the prisoners said, yeah, that's true. You can't go into the kitchen as freely as you want to anymore. You can't go outside as freely as you want. That God had to put you in a room where somebody else controlled the key so God can get your attention. And friend, I have learned that sometimes God will put you in a hospital bed for the very same reason. To speak to soldiers. To retrain soldiers. So soldiers to get their strength back. And to attend to the needs of the soldiers. And that through physical therapy, how endure is that soldier to get back to do what he can do? And it will remind that soldier, you know what? We're not strong. And that soldier may want to quit. There's nothing wrong with that. Jeremiah wanted to quit. Job wanted to quit. Elijah wanted to quit. But they don't quit. Some don't quit. And they get even stronger and they fight. And they cry out to God. And they get help from God. And then when it comes time for them to put their armor back on. Paul was an example of a wounded soldier quite often. He was a soldier put down quite often. In all the perils that Paul had. And Paul didn't fight the devil all the time. Paul did not fight God all the time. Paul did not fight the world all the time. Paul did not fight Christians all the time. Though he did, Paul fought starving, shipwrecks, his own pain and suffering. And the devil attacked him. And God would attack him. And the world attacked him. And other Christians attacked him. And that is the Christian soldier life. And there are churches, onward Christian soldier, and have no idea what a Christian soldier is. And there are Christians who know Christian soldiers and they see what the Christian soldier fights and the battles and the troubles he has and they say, I don't want that. But you know the Christian soldier gets gold, silver, precious stone and a right to an inheritance. You know, there's also soldiers in the United States military they have gotten injured by a purpose and they have been rewarded for their injury of, of service with the Purple Heart sometimes the injuries are for others I'm here to tell you, not every Christian is going to get a reward. Because not every Christian fights. 
As a matter of fact, let me tell you my own experience. I know Christians who aggravate the Christian soldier. And they mock the soldiers. They make fun of the soldiers. They harass the soldiers. They are not on the soldier's side. And sometimes that does great harm to the soldiers of morale. What great damage when our soldiers went off to Vietnam and at home, they were protesting against those soldiers. And would call them baby killers. And when they came home, there was no grand celebration when they came home. But there was rebellion and rebuke and dismay. And friend, I have had churches, I've had pastors, and I've had Christians insult my Christian soldierness. And friend, it had put me down, it has made me uh, lonely, it has made me discouraged, it has even made me want to quit. It's made me angry. But you're not doing it to me, Jesus said. You're doing it to Jesus. And I get up and, and brush myself off and go into battle sad. Go into battle lonely. Go into battle discouraged. But I can rightly sing Onward Christian Soldier. And I've been injured in combat. I have been to the aid station. I have been to the hospital. I have been to the doctors. I don't believe man can heal you. I believe God can heal you. And he has. And he is doing And I would be so foolish to tell a Christian, don't go to a doctor. That's foolish. And I would be so foolish to say, well, go to that man because he, cause he, he's a faith healer. Uh, I'd be foolish. And the Christian soldier is a battle. It is a conflict. He has enemies all around. You know the number one enemy that a Christian soldier gets? And it's not from the devil. It's when you go into the, to the doctor, you go into the hospital, and you say, well, where's your injury? And you take off your arm and you show them all the arrows in the back and in the butt. And the doctor said, oh, did, you, did you run? <laughs> Did you surrender? No, I was in the front line. Those in my back and in my butt are from fellow Christian stock. They're from churches. They're from pastors. They're from Christians. And then I have the fiery darts of the devil. And I have the wounds of the world. And I've got my own self-inflicted injuries because of foolishness and sin. Paul said about this, 2 Timothy. What, what's he say? What's Paul's closing words? Paul's final words, I have fought a good fight. There are bad fights to fight. There are Christians who fight the wrong fight. It's not good.
I have finished my course, God's course, Jesus calling. I have kept the faith. There are Christians today that are faithless. They didn't finish the course. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all of them that love his appearing. And you love to see the commander in chief, the general of all generals, the king of kings, the Lord of lords, you are desiring him. There is a crown of righteousness. Not all Christians are looking for that Jesus. And they're not going to get the crown of righteousness. There are some Christians, oh, we're rapture. We, they only say it because their pastor says it. And they don't really mean it. There are Christians, oh, Jesus, just wait a little while. I got something more important. But a soldier says, I want to see my commander in chief, Jesus Christ. You realize that in the American military, and I don't know how many men and women in the armed forces of the Marines, the Air Force, the Army, the Navy, the Coast Guard. I don't know how many men and women we have, both active and retired. I don't know. There's a lot. Do you realize the chances of for those men and women to stand before any president in the United States. And there have been military personnel that stood before the president of that, of that, of that time. And there may be, to, presently, maybe military personnel that will stand before the president of the United States and in the future. But not all Army, not all Navy, not all Air Force, not all Marines, and not all Coast Guard, men and women, both active, retired, or future, they're not all going to stand before the President one day. They won't. That is their Commander-in-Chief. And yet every single Christian that is saved, if you're born again, you will stand before Jesus Christ. Your Savior, your God, your Creator, your Commander-in-Chief. And friend, plenty of those Christians had not desired to see Him. They don't care to see Him. Their career is more important. Their church is more important. The church grounds are more important. A wedding was more important. A car was more important. A baseball team was more important. But to a soldier of Jesus Christ that fights, that stands the guard, that stands the ground, oh, wait to see his commander-in-chief one day. It'd be like Queen Elizabeth taking the sword and knighting. I don't know how she does it. And there will be Christians that will not get that crown. They will get no crowns and no inheritance at all. And many of those Christians have hampered tried to hamper and discourage the soldiers of Jesus. And the soldier says, I fought the good fight. I have finished my course. You know what? He has spent time. I guarantee in the hospital. <laughs> he has spent time in the uh, 
the aid station. He has been before doctors and nurses. He has been wounded physically, mentally, and spiritually. That's okay. Because when we see Jesus, then it will be worth it all.